Every single one of Marie Noe's ten children had passed away, making her the most pitiful lady in America for 19 years. Between April 1949 and January 1968, Marie and her husband Arthur received a great deal of compassion from people all around the nation, with many of them thinking that they were the unfortunate victims of bad luck. Tragically, two of their children passed away in hospitals, one was stillborn and the other passed away at the age of only six hours. The other eight, however, passed away in the Noe residence in Philadelphia while being looked after by their mother. All eight Noe kids died before the age of 14 months, despite leaving the hospital in good health. Their strange early deaths were linked to sudden infant death syndrome, a relatively recent medical phenomenon in the 1950s and 1960s. But in truth, she had suffocated them all with pillows. All of her children, Richard, Elizabeth, Jacqueline, Arthur, Constance, Mary, Catherine, and young Arthur, had passed away. Letitia, the sixth child, was stillborn, with umbilical cord not listed as the cause of death, while Teresa, the eighth child, passed away due to a blood condition. The doctors, investigators, and coroners who dealt with the deaths of one baby after another didn't have any reason to suspect anything, but there was also no evidence to suggest anything other than Sid's death. After 30 years, Stephen Fried, a reporter for Philadelphia Magazine, finally delved into the No story in the late 1990s. In order to interview them for his article, Fried hunted down the couple, who are now in their early 70s. Marie informed him that no one could show that she had hurt her children because none of them had any marks or bruises. She uttered, one of those foolish things that occasionally occurs. I guess we just weren't meant to be parents. The Lord needs angels, so we send a ton of them up there, Arthur continued. The police revisited the long dormant Noe case after receiving Fried's completed report, which was originally motivated by a belief that many historical newborn murders had been misdiagnosed as Sid's deaths. Three decades after killing her tenth and final child, Marie Noe finally confessed to killing seven other children in March 1998 after a 12-hour interview with her. However, she could only recall the specifics of the killings of the first three and the fifth, she explained how she killed Richard, her firstborn, in April 1949, claiming that he was constantly sobbing. He was unable to express his concerns to me. He simply kept crying. Under his face, there was a pillow. As soon as he stopped moving, I seized my hand and shoved his face into the pillow. She similarly murdered her second child, Elizabeth, two years later. Marie remembered, in the bassinet, she was. I positioned her on her back before suffocating her by placing a pillow from the bed over her face. She was agitated. Elizabeth was struggling even with the pillow covering her face since she was stronger than Richard. Until she stopped moving, I kept the pillow positioned over her face. When she spoke with the police, it was seen that she referred to each baby by it rather than by name. Marie added that she had always wished she would be discovered and put an end to. I knew what I was doing was absolutely wrong, the woman admitted. The OAP shrugged, all I can figure is that I'm terribly sick, when asked why she intended to harm her children. She was unable to explain her motivation. Marie provided a number of justifications for the deaths of her children, such as having received blood transfusions from prisoners as a child, being a husband's blood relative, or simply being a bad person. Marie wasn't taken into jail by the police until August of the following year, when she was charged with eight charges of murder. As they hauled her into custody, the police took boxes of baby pictures and other mementos. Despite her admission of infanticide, her devoted husband Art did not accept it. Even on a talk radio program, he supported her, saying, she is both my buddy and my ally. I believe she is the most stunning woman in the world. I'll fight until I'm dead to prove that she didn't ever hurt them. Marie received a 20-year probationary period after entering a plea of guilty to eight charges of second-degree murder. She was placed under electronic house arrest for the first five years and received mental care so researchers could try to understand why some moms are motivated to kill their children. Marie's motivations were never understood, however it is thought that years of sexual, emotional, 
and physical abuse during her youth left a lasting scar on Marie. She had mixed personality disorder, which included avoidant, dependent, narcissistic, histrionic, borderline paranoid, and antisocial tendencies, according to a report by the court psychiatrist. By 2001, psychologists and psychiatrists had ruled out multiple personality disorder, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and neurological issues. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, Marie detailed to doctors instances of what she called blindness following the deaths of three of her children, equating them to space voyages. She was discovered to have an IQ of 78, to be a serious drinker, and to harbor deep-seated animosity toward her mother. A psychotherapist once referred to her as a mentally complex and primitive woman who had experienced significant physical and mental trauma as a child, parental neglect, potential sexual abuse as a child, and a history of promiscuity. She was forced to have a hysterectomy as a result of problems following the delivery of her tenth child, which could have prevented the deaths of many additional helpless infants. Marie Noe passed away on May 5, 2016 at the age of 87.